Hey there! Welcome to the second part of our altimeter series. In this video, we're diving into the world of aviation altitudes. Ever wondered what your altimeter can actually tell you? Stick around, and we'll unravel the mystery together. Altitude is the vertical distance above a reference point. This point could be sea level, represented by the mean sea level, an internationally accepted average height of sea level worldwide. Alternatively, it can be any location on the Earth's surface. It may also refer to a specific pressure level, like 29.92 inches of mercury. When measured from mean sea level, it's called altitude, often abbreviated as MSL to indicate altitude above mean sea level. When measured from the ground, it's referred to as height or absolute altitude, but it's more commonly known as altitude above ground level, or AGL for short. The third type is pressure altitude, which is crucial in aviation, as flight levels are defined based on pressure altitude. The reference point for pressure altitude, 29.92 inches of mercury, isn't just a random number. It's the theoretical pressure at mean sea level in what we call a standard atmosphere. In this ideal world, pressure, temperature, and density maintain standardized values at every altitude. This acts as a reference frame for comparison, so when we say pressure is up or down, we're comparing it to these established standard values. But real life isn't textbook, a perfectly standard condition rarely exists. Pressure often does its own thing, not sticking to the standard level and causing the reference point to shift, relative to mean sea level. Consequently, pressure altitude can end up higher or lower than it would be in a perfect environment. We'll get into that in a bit. And notice, this moving reference point isn't exclusive to pressure altitude. Thanks to variations in land elevation, the same object measured in different spots can have different heights. In contrast, altitude remains consistent everywhere on Earth. Maybe that's why they call it, true altitude. True altitude and height are geometric measurements in meters or feet. These bodies don't care about the weather, they stay constant. Pressure altitude is a bit of a different animal. While reported in feet or meters, it's basically derived from atmospheric pressure based on the International Standard Atmosphere Lapse Rate. You can check the ISA table for the nitty-gritty, but for us pilots, it's more about getting the feel for how pressure altitude behaves, than sweating over exact numbers. A rule of thumb is that for every 1,000 foot rise in elevation, pressure drops by 1 inch of mercury. If you watched the first video in the altimeter series, you'd see it's the same trick the altimeter pulls. No coincidence there, when you set the altimeter to 29.92 inches of mercury, the altitude it shows is precisely the pressure altitude. As promised, let's explore how non-standard surface pressure can impact the reference point of pressure altitude. Imagine we're flying at a true altitude of 4,000 feet. In a perfectly standard condition, pressure altitude is also 4,000 feet. However, if sea level pressure drops to a mere 28.92 inches of mercury, our reference point sort of disappears. That's when meteorologists step in with some creative thinking. They invented an imaginary column of air extending below sea level, all to artificially acquire that standard pressure reading of 29.92 inches of mercury. The result of this imaginative approach is that when the air pressure is lower than the standard, the reference point for pressure altitude shifts below sea level, causing pressure altitude to read higher than true altitude. In simpler terms, if you are flying constant pressure altitude in a low pressure zone, you'll be lower than you might think. Conversely, in the case of high pressure conditions, the opposite occurs, pressure altitude ends up lower than true altitude, giving you an elevation higher than you believe. Pressure altitude is said to be independent of temperature changes. Essentially, this means that the conversion from pressure to altitude remains consistent, regardless of temperature fluctuations. Picture three distinct areas with varying temperatures. An area with standard atmospheric condition, a cold region, and a warm zone. Cold air tends to gather, increasing air density and causing a rapid pressure drop over a shorter distance. 
On the flip side, warm air prefers to spread out, reducing air density and requiring a longer distance for the pressure to decrease by the same amount observed in the cold area. Despite these temperature and density variations, pressure altitude readings remain unaffected. The same pressure is consistently converted to the same altitude. But here's the tricky part, while the pressure altitude reading is not influenced by air temperature, the actual altitude for the same reading does change due to temperature variations. If we were to trace a line connecting the same pressure altitude across these areas, it wouldn't follow a straight path like true altitude lines, instead, it would resemble more of a staircase. You may see the shape better in this image. Pressure altitude reads higher than true altitude in cold area, and lower in warm region. Keep in mind, it is the reading we are talking about, not the actual height. Additionally, non-standard sea level pressure can move the reference point of pressure levels upward or downward, whether in cold or warm regions. In the real world, air doesn't follow a straight path. The lines representing pressure altitudes will be more like curves than straight lines. So, flying at a constant pressure altitude is a bit like riding a roller coaster. Let's add a new twist to the altitude story. Density altitude. It's the pressure altitude adjusted for non-standard temperature. It kicks off the same point as pressure altitude but with one extra condition. Keeping sea level temperature at a standard 15 degrees Celsius. The connection between pressure altitude and density altitude is wrapped up in this equation. I get it, math isn't everyone's idea of fun, but trust me, this one's easier than you think. In the equation, dA stands for density altitude, pA is the pressure altitude in feet, 120 is a constant, T is the outside air temperature, and T sub S is the standard temperature for that pressure altitude. Both temperatures are in degrees Celsius. Let's crunch some numbers. Starting with chilly air. At a pressure altitude of 4,000 feet, the temperature is a frosty minus 3 degrees Celsius, 10 degrees cooler than the standard 7 degrees Celsius. Plugging these numbers into the equation, we get a density altitude of 2,800 feet. In the warm region where the outside temperature is 17 degrees Celsius, the density altitude jumps to 5,200 feet. Under standard conditions, the density altitude matches the pressure altitude. No surprises here because the difference between T and T sub S is zero, cancelling out the whole second term, leaving us with dA equals pA. A neat trick to figure out whether density altitude is higher or lower than pressure altitude. Check the difference between T and T sub S. If it's negative, density altitude is lower. If it's positive, then density altitude is higher than pressure altitude. Don't flip the sequence of T and T sub S, otherwise your result will be flipped. We have our four types of altitudes, and let's introduce the fifth one, indicated altitude, which is directly read off the altimeter. The question is, which altitude does an altimeter indicate? We know it's designed for pressure altitude. So, if you set the altimeter to 29.92, or QNE in ICAO terms, the indicated altitude matches pressure altitude. Altimeter always shows accurate pressure altitude. Unless there are instrument errors. We also know that altimeter doesn't account for air temperature, meaning it can't show density altitude. But no worries, we can use our E6B for that. Here comes the million dollar question. If the altimeter is set to the mean sea level pressure in accordance with the current METAR setting, does it indicate true altitude? Technically, no. Remember, true altitude is geometric, whereas the altimeter measures pressure altitude, not distance. However, in close to standard atmospheric conditions, the altimeter can approximate true altitude with negligible difference. Therefore, when set to meet our setting, a KO term QNH, the altitude indicated is often considered as true altitude. Same goes for height. To get height, the altimeter needs to be tuned to the local airfield pressure, QFE. This is mainly used for low-altitude operations and is less common in general aviation, 
If not provided by ATC, you can find the altimeter setting on the ground by adjusting it until the indicated altitude reads zero. Choosing the right altimeter setting can make your altimeter show different altitudes. Pretty cool, right? Well done on grasping the ins and outs of altitudes and setting your altimeter. In our next video, we'll toss in a few exam questions to see how well you've got the hang of it. Catch you in the next one!